Jagex recently released a drop rate blog post detailing exactly how the point system works inside of Toa. I've been looking for the most efficient GP an hour methods on stream and have the best invocations and methods for GP down to a science. This video is going to detail all the little tactics I use to speed up rooms and or increase your total points at raid. The points blog didn't change too much about how we go about raids, but what it did confirm is that Warden is by far the best points of the raid, similar to Ulm in Chambers. Raid level dramatically increases GP an hour, so the goal is to get to Warden as fast as possible with the highest raid level you can consistently do. Before we get into it, let's discuss the invocations and which ones are good for money. The basic rule of thumb is anything that slows your raid down too much is probably not worth using, but the goal is getting as high a raid level as possible. By slow your raid down, I'm not talking about things like Boulder Dash that wastes 20 seconds in Baba, I'm talking about overly draining or quiet prayers, which both waste several minutes a raid. All the path invocations except for Path Master are worth using. These increase the HP and defense of the bosses up to Warden, which logically thinking sounds bad because we get to Warden more slowly, but the massive raid level increase makes them worth using anyways. Pathmaster is only an extra 10 raid level, for how much it slows you down, not to mention the added difficulty, it is not worth using for money. Hardcore and the best speed invocations you can use are a given, as these are a big increase. No help needed is excellent as it is 40 raid level. Always take power and bring enough restore for the whole raid. Quiet prayers make the raid dramatically harder and waste time. Keep that off. Although deadly prayers is free raid level. On a diet and dehydration are both worth using if you have yellow Kyrus. Every single boss unique invocation is worth using except for medic and overlords. Medic wastes way too much time in Kefri. Overlords also waste a little bit of time, and those additional Scarab spawns only have a 0.5 times point multiplier. Double Trouble, Feeling Special, and Keep Back are all difficult to use, but if you're capable of dealing with them, they are absolutely worth using. My optimal money run setup is a raid level of 510. If you can't make 40 minutes, just turn that off until you're consistently getting 35 minute raids. Or if you're doing one plus one, of course. Obviously, you can turn off any of these you want. Use this as a benchmark to work up to. This is basically the most efficient run you can possibly work up to with max gear. This is my gear setup, seven ways for each style. Keep in mind each range switch is a max hit Sultan. I camp Light Bearer and Blood Fury with max melee. BGS is hugely important. As much as I loved running Bone Dagger, BGS can respec bosses if it misses and can whack the core on final hits, making it the better choice in solos. Yellow Kyrus, Blowpipe, five restore, if you want to flick like a madman, you can bring ZCB instead of Claws with four restore. Thrall runes and book, small stack of chins, divine super combat potion, and rapier for P2. Things like eternal boots or pegs are an absolute waste of space. These are both sub 1% DPS increases in the rooms you use them in. The optimal boss order for speed is Baba, Kefri, and then typically Zebek then Akka. Zebek has a 1 in 6 chance of being level 4 by the third room with Path Seeker, and you absolutely want to keep him below level 4 if possible. The reason for this order is that melee benefits less from Salt than Tebow or Shadow does. Melee gets a much smaller max hit increase. Baba first means you can pre-pot every useful potion for the monkey room, meaning you don't need to bring a ranged potion or stamina. This conveniently matches the wiki's assumptions on the Toa calculator. One last thing before we start. Most of the footage is from my 1 plus 1 500 runs I've been doing on stream, so if you're wondering why bosses have weird mechanics or high HP, that would be why. These runs are technically even more efficient for GP, but are incredibly difficult. The Monkey Room has various caps, like Nilocus Room, that prevent the wave from advancing. All monkeys except for Thralls, meaning Brawler, Thrower, Mage, Shaman, and Volatile, contribute to the cap. The cap for the first two waves requires zero monkeys exist before sending the next wave. All waves except for the second to last wave have a cap of one monkey before sending. The second to last wave has a cap of two monkeys. This means the goal is to kill as many of the low HP monkeys and blow up volatiles to send the next wave as quickly as possible. Chins are great for this room as they roll off the defense of your target, meaning you can kill the throwers and brawlers with chins off of thralls. Keep in mind that summoned thralls will not attack cursed baboons, so if you left something at low HP, you can go attack the cursed baboons for a bit, and your thrall will continue on your last target. Baba done using conventional methods is always fastest, 
but once you turn on dehydration, she becomes much less consistent to face tank. Red X method for Baba negates all damage. You prevent her from attacking by forcing her to proc her Shadow Stomp repeatedly. Keep in mind Baba is 6 tick, so doing this method slows your melee attacks down to that attack speed. My setup for this is very simple and works every time. Wait on the right side of the gap when entering, hit Baba once, walk to the right one tile, right click the obelisk and walk 3 tiles under, then click Baba to walk 3 tiles back. You are now in cycle. Simply walk 2 tiles under and 2 tiles back, making sure you wait outside for her animation. When Baba drops boulders, you will need to avoid them by walking diagonally a tile, but you can continue Red X the same way right after. I have a similar setup for after boulders. Drop a potion to the left of Baba after skipping boulders. Left, not right, right side will not work. Run to the top right of her, hit her once, step a tile back. When she approaches, you step three under and attack Baba just like before. Once again, you're in cycle, just step two under, two back. Dodging boulders in a similar way to before. You have time to fit in switches in between attacks, so it's actually possible to fit in a ranged switch with ZCB and drop a spec, then switch back to melee. Don't forget Baba can be drained 20 defense levels, so BGS until you hit at least that much. BGS is conveniently 6 tick, so you can still use it while red Xing. The Kefri puzzle doesn't have much to it, just use the Tombs of a Mascot plugin to speed it up. Kefri benefits dramatically from Death Charge and Thralls. There are tons of targets to proc Death Charge from, don't forget if using a shadow, you can pull soul runes out of it and use those. Kefri can be drained at 20 defense levels. Bone Dagger is not a guaranteed spec on the first hit of Kefri because of some weird bug, but it will work in teams if someone else hits first, which I abuse in 1 plus 1s. BGS in solo is worth using over Fang specs if you will be doing more than 1000 damage to Kefri in the coming phases. Kefri resets her defense once you remove her shield completely in the final phase only, so defense training here is very worthwhile. Keep in mind BGS has a less than 50% accuracy, so this may take quite a few specs. Agile Scarabs often stack up in corners of the room. If you see a stack of three or more of them, these are worth chinning for points due to their extremely low defense, even if you don't have a ranged boost. They have a one times point multiplier. Don't forget you can also use these to conveniently proc Death Charge. If Kefri is level 2 or higher, the Healing Scarab Swarms will come in two batches of three each time she goes down, so you will need Chins to prevent her healing. Perfectly catching Swarms cuts Kefri's HP by roughly 70%, so it is incredibly worth catching these if you can safely do that. If you are full HP on the second down, a decent option is simply pray protect from magic and ignore the Arcane. The Arcane hits between 30 and 60 through magic, but you will only need to tank one typically. The Arcane jumps if hit by 3 hit splats, plus the number of team members, in my 1 plus 1s that makes it 4 hits, or if you hit a 40 or higher. If you have ranged potion, Tebow is your best DPS against the Arcane, if not Fang overtakes. Keep in mind Tebow may still overtake if you waste ticks running after the Arcane with melee. Melee Scarab heals less the lower HP it is. It isn't worth keeping it alive, but this may be worth keeping in mind. Hitting it once as Arcane jumps may prevent some healing to Kefri. My last tip is keep in mind you can Kyrus the eggs. This trades 4 ticks for 12 HP and a death charge, which might be worth it in a pinch. Zebak puzzle is incredibly simple, just water the tree without making a mistake quickly. You can run through the spikes with a running start from the correct tile, avoiding their line of sight. Using the water jug on the waterfall and using the full water jug on the tree both save a tick. I'd highly recommend swapping the left click of the jug to use. Zebek actually has quite a bit going on. He can be drained 20 defense levels, so BGS until you damage him that much. Make sure when you melee, you flinch by running two tiles away. If you walk back, you will still get hit by the melee, which maxes over 100. I'd highly recommend spending an adrenaline dose at the beginning of Zebek, as ZCB specs are incredibly powerful here. When Zeb throws out barricades, ideally be at the left side of the arena, as typically this has an easy first solve. Keep in mind you can push or pull jugs diagonally, so you have many options for moving them. These are also affected by weapon travel time, so if it is far away when you T-bow, your bow will take several ticks to hit it. It is possible to Kyrus through the roar if you seriously mess up. It will leave you below 10 HP though, so I wouldn't recommend it. You can catch all of Zebek's blood barrages if he is level 2 or 3 by watching for the blood indicator underneath him and praying mage. This works even after he enrages. If Zebek is a higher or lower path level, 
The barrage lines up with his attacks, so you'll be forced to take barrages if they line up with his ranged attack. When Zabak fires waves, you can choose to wave skip if it is a very bad layout, walk away from the wave for one tile, and then run through it. This is the exact same as the spike traps in the previous puzzle rooms. If you try to just run through it, you will get caught by line of sight. You need a running start. Using true tile on the waves, there is simply an NPC called Wave, can really help with this. For Akka Puzzle, you need a mining level of at least 85 to get a 1 down puzzle. Boosting your mining over 100 increases your max hit by 2. The Tombs of a Masket plugin has an easy indicator for when to click now. Just click when it turns green while standing at least a tile away to get the 1 down. Be very careful of Shadow Orb spawns. These can sometimes spawn on top of each other, hitting you for over 60 damage. You can actually easily die in the puzzle before Akka. Toa plugin can also remove the exit option from left click with a pickaxe in your inventory, so turn that on if you don't want to take it with you. Akka is the hardest room of the raid and has loads of little intricacies. I use radius markers to give Akka a true tile corresponding to the color of the style he is using. I'm going to link Kirby's guide to Butterfly below, as it's better than my old guide, and Butterfly is too complicated for the video. Akka can be drained at 10 defense levels, but he recovers levels very quickly at roughly 15 seconds a level, so this isn't worth bothering with. Akka's shadows do proc death charge, so keep that in mind. The best DPS on Akka and his shadows is the shadow, so ideally you want to keep Akka in melee form as long as possible. Akka has a chance to switch styles each time he does a special attack, which is every 60 seconds, and each time he melees you, so avoid letting him hit you whenever possible. Augury is a 3% DPS increase against Akka. It's up to you if this is worth the immense prayer drain. Keep in mind Mystic Lore is a 1.5% DPS increase, which at 4 times less prayer drain may be worthwhile if prayer is tight. The shadows give you a DPS check if you fail to kill them quickly enough, which often happens at high raid levels. I personally just use my line of red tiles to one of the red tiles on the outside for this, clicking as the shadow is slamming the spear into the ground, but you can use any tile in this entire area. You typically tank a melee doing this, so be aware he can change styles. Double Trouble and Feeling Special is one of the hardest invo combinations, but it's actually very manageable with some practice. When Akka begins Simon Says, simply make sure every time you move you are running two tiles. If you mess this up, you have one tickle leeway. On the spawning orbs, you can still avoid the damage if you click off quickly. I have four tiles I use for transitions after Akka spawns shadows. These work tick perfectly both horizontally and diagonally. Simply do an attack on the upper butterfly tile, run to the diag you're transitioning to, and do another attack. Then run to the lower butterfly tile, do an attack, and start running. This only works in the directions I have marked. You can get my tile indicators in the description. You can also manipulate Akka's positioning after Simon says to give yourself an extra attack by body blocking him. The amount of time you need to stop him is different in each quadrant, so you need to get a feel for this. Keep back is also easily dealt with. When Akka is ranged, step back right before he attacks to avoid the melee damage entirely. The trade-off here is you are now using a 6-tick fang. When Akka is maging, you can do two pipes, then step back and do a third and step back in to dodge all melee damage. This doesn't waste any ticks. Akka's final phase really just takes practice. Mage Prayer does nothing beyond 375 raid level. True tiles on the orbs help me, they are simply NPCs called Unstable Orb. Make sure you don't have a Thrall active. If you forgot about that, just resummon a zombie Thrall to mitigate the annoyance. Warden has loads of tricks I use. For P1, you can stand on the far side of the arena to avoid the UFOs. Only a weapon with 10 tile range will work for this, but Shadow is the best DPS anyways. If you do not have a Shadow, BGS on the Obelisk for 30 defense drain and using Pipe is your next best option. Each set of orbs deals 75 damage to you, 90 in my 1 plus 1s. This damage can be mitigated by tick eating them with Kyrus. The skinny orb fired from the right warden is the exact same timing as yellows at P3 Verzik. You spec when it's roughly in the middle of the screen. For the big orb from the left warden, it's the same as Soda Tsai. Take heat when the ball touches your head. You can keep both of these on the same timing by not tanking skulls. This allows you to take heat both at the same time. If you are 1 HP when tick eating these, you will take only 2 damage instead of 75. The lower your HP is when you tick eat, the better. I like to tank some orbs on the right and left to keep the timing the exact same, but also damage myself. Tank the first set of orbs, then when the second set of orbs is coming out, tank the skulls on the left side until you're at 1 HP. This will keep the incoming orbs on the same tick, but also prepare the correct warden for P2. Keep in mind the prayer drain is not negated by tick eating. 
you will still be drained 15 prayer points when it hits you with deadly prayers on. Make sure you aren't tanking skulls as you kill the obelisk or the explosion will hit you for roughly a 30. I've actually died to that repeatedly. For P2, summon a zombie or skeletal thrall, as the ghost cannot hit through magic prayer, but the other two hit no matter what. I highly recommend marking these two tiles, as it allows you to avoid the windmill and radial specials easily without dragging warden. Accuracy affects your minimum hit, while damage bonuses affect your maximum hit. Things like boot takeoffs and augury do affect your DPS in this phase. Warden's max hit through prayer is 10, so make sure you cure us when you're below 10 HP. The skull special can be avoided by standing one or two cardinal steps away from the shadow indicator. Keep in mind these can fall under Warden or near the obelisk. When the core is ejected on the first down, you will get five four tick hits and then a final sixth hit. How many hits you get on future downs is based on Warden's HP. Below 80% and you will get eight hits on the next down. If it's below 60%, you will get 10 hits. Five DDS specs into a BGS whack will get Warden below 60% on the first down in a 500. After three downs, Warden will stop giving points, so it's optimal to get a gear setup that gets you the kill on the third down. When the core is sucked back into Warden, it procs Death Charge, so you can actually get 15% spec energy every single down. For P3, standing right against the Warden is optimal, as standing far away causes your projectile to hit much more slowly, and any additional attack going towards Warden is nulled by Skull Phase starting. Killing all of the skulls damages Warden for 5% of his total HP, and this is not given to you as points. Because P3 is worth the most points of the entire raid, with a 2.5 times multiplier, skipping these skulls is worth it for GP an hour. To skip skulls, kill all but one skull. This keeps it from being lethal if you happen to mess up. Then immediately run to any of the tiles I have marked, wait for the skull explosion, and then immediately click to the center of the room. You will run over the damage similar to the DPS skip at Akka. Skipping all four skulls gives you 20% more damage, equating to roughly 5% more total loot for the entire raid. For P4, sip adrenaline and dump a couple of DPS specs, leave enough energy that you can still cure us. When you are down to the final row, the easiest way to deal with this part is watch for the lightning shadows. Move to a tile next to the one about to strike, then step onto it as it does. This becomes a safe tile for a few seconds. Avoid boulders at all costs. Getting hit by a boulder typically is just instant death. They hit you for around 50 damage. Tank a lightning before anything else, always. If you are anywhere below 70 HP, you should use a Kira spec. You can be comboed for ridiculous damage in this phase, and it isn't worth risking anything. It's also best to try to stay toward the middle and not the outside edges, as sometimes you can get a horrible lightning pattern, and being in the middle allows you to avoid them. It can actually do lightning on all but one tile at once. I've seen that a few times. Don't forget that Zebak being level 4 affects both P3 and P4. If your Zebak was over level 4, be faster on the prayers as the projectiles travel a tick faster if that was the case. A raid completion using the tactics I use to boost your points, which is chinning agiles and skull skip, makes the average 510 raid level completion as of writing this script just under 16 mil GP on average. 16 mil a raid at 40 minutes a raid, including banking in between, means we complete one and a half raids an hour. At that rate, your average GP an hour comes out to 24 mil. Absolutely absurd. Obviously, this is Toa taken to its extreme and requires incredibly consistent play, but this rate can be reached with practice. If you're catching this as it goes up, I will be live on Twitch. I'm still running Toa 1 plus 1 500s, looking for tech, so pop in. That's it for the video. Leave a like if you liked it and or subscribe. Thanks, guys.